Hey everyone, in this video today we are doing a roundup of the latest and greatest news about gaming on an Apple Silicon Mac. So the first exciting piece of news is the fact that the Hades 2 Mac port has now been released. So Hades 2 originally came out on early access earlier this year on May the 6th on Windows only, but it now has a Mac port and it supports the Apple M1 or later. So I actually tried this out on my MacBook Air with 8GB of RAM and GPU cores and it seems to run just fine at 60fps, so definitely go ahead and check that out. It's available on Steam and the Epic Game Store. Next up, Braid now has a Mac port officially released. So this is Braid Anniversary Edition, the kind of remaster of the original game. And it's now available to download on Mac OS from the App Store itself. Just be aware that this is going to be different from the Netflix version of the game, which is available for iPhone and iPad, which is basically free to play as long as you have an active Netflix subscription. It's a shame that this didn't actually come over to the Mac side. Also, unfortunately, the Mac port isn't available on Steam, I'm afraid that's Windows only. So if you want to check this out, this is going to be available on the Mac App Store. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Also, we have the Mac App Store pages for some pretty anticipated games. For example, Power World have now appeared on the Mac App Store. This is now expected on the 26th of November 2024. And we also have Prince of Persia Lost Crown coming out on the 3rd of December 2024 on the App Store as well. So it remains to be seen whether these Mac ports are going to make it over to Steam. Furthermore, all of the natively optimized Mac ports of the Resident Evil games are now on sale. So for example, here you can see that Resident Evil 7, 4, Village are all on sale until the 4th of November so make sure to check these out. Just be aware that a recent patch added always on DRM. So it checks on the internet whether you own the game the first time you launch them, which means that if you don't have an internet connection, you basically can't play these games. However, don't let that deter you too much because these remain some of the best AAA gaming that you can get on a Mac at the moment and are very well optimized even for the M1 chip. Next, we're going to be talking about the two first ray trace games on the Mac. So that includes Myst and Riven. And if we go ahead and look at their latest patch notes, they say here that they now support hardware accelerated ray trace reflection reflections now available on Macs with powerful M3 chips. So if you don't have an M1 or M2, I'm afraid that you can't use it. We also have updates for HDR support and metal effects as well. So you now do some upscaling within the game. So here we're looking at Mist on high settings at 1080p. But if we go back and turn ray tracing on and I've got metal effects quality mode turned on here, you're going to see that this frame rate starts to tank pretty badly. We're getting about 30 FPS and to my eye, it doesn't really look that different to me. Now it's fine as long as you're not looking at anything which requires reflections that's uh, remotely shiny, then I don't have that problem, but that kind of defeats the point of ray tracing. I've always thought of this as a pretty gimmicky type of feature and it really kills performance on a Mac. So the next piece of news is the fact that Windows 11 ARM ISOs are gonna be made officially available by Microsoft to download. So it says here that these are gonna be made available to download in the coming weeks. Right now you can download the standard x86-64 version. And a lot of hopeful Mac gamers have been saying that this might be the sign that bootcamp might be coming back, but this is really quite far from the truth. There's a huge amount of work that needs to be done before bootcamp can actually come to Apple Silicon hardware. Microsoft would need to be working with Apple in order to create all of the drivers necessary for Mac hardware to work with Windows 11 ARM. So of course, over the last few years, we've been able to build Windows 11 ARM images using UUP dump or downloading directly through VMware or through Parallels. However, this is gonna be the first time that Microsoft officially allow end users to download the Windows 11 ARM ISO. And a lot of hopeful Mac gamers have been saying that this could be the start of official Microsoft support for bootcamp. However, I think this is probably being a little bit too hopeful. In order for Windows 11 ARM to work natively on Apple Silicon hardware, Microsoft will need to invest substantial amounts of time building up all of the drivers and support infrastructure for this to actually work. And they will need to work closely with Apple to make this happen. And as far as I'm aware, there isn't an incentive for Microsoft or Apple to actually make this happen. Parallels, the virtual machine software, which allows you to run Windows 11 ARM on a Mac, remains the only Microsoft sanctioned way of actually running this operating system on Apple Silicon hardware and I don't really see that changing. So I'm afraid that Windows 11 ARM being made available for download doesn't really mean much and Bootcamp probably isn't coming back any time in the near future. And speaking of unsupported operating systems, somebody has managed to get a copy of macOS working on the Steam Deck. So this is using a piece of technology called Open Core and this allows the installation of operating systems like macOS Ventura on the unsupported Steam Deck. So you can see here that Gigatech is demonstrating how this works on the Steam Deck. The native orientation of the Steam Deck is actually a portrait display being rotated on its side. You can go ahead and load up games like chess. The fact is that there is no practical application for this. There's no graphics hardware support. And even if you'd wanted to run any of the AAA games that are now available on the Mac, you can actually do this on an x86 device like the Steam Deck anyway. But it remains a really cool project. I'll leave a link to the instructions and the video in the description. Next up, we're going to be talking about a new metal backend for Simu. So Simu is the Wii 
GPU emulator that works fantastically on the Apple Silicon Mac. And up until this point, it's been using something called Molten VK, which translates Vulkan into Metal, which is Apple's graphics API. However, a pure Metal backend for Simi would offer better performance and better game compatibility. In particular, it's going to allow support for geometry shaders and also fixes various graphical issues with Simu. So at the moment, this is not actually finished yet, but you can play many popular games without issues. It already outperforms Vulkan in performance tests and is roughly 20 to 25% faster. It completely fixes issues in games like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash and also Super Mario Maker. And it's definitely quite sad because it does remind me of the fact that we did almost have a metal renderer for the Ryu Jinx Nintendo Switch emulator. So right before the Ryu Jinx project was completely shut down, Isaac Ryu, the developer of Whiskey, was working on a metal backend for Ryu Jinx, which has some amazing progress being able to play multiple games at faster frame rates and with better compatibility. But unfortunately, the project has been completely cancelled with the cancellation of Ryu Jinx. So now it's good to see that Nintendo emulation is still getting worked on, especially on the Apple Silicon Mac side. I'm definitely going to be covering it when this Metal API backend gets released on macOS. Next, we're going to be talking about the Star Wars The Old Republic Mac ports. So the Mac test has now officially been released, and I actually got to test this out all thanks to the help of a user called Pytris or P-Y-T-R-Y-S. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And what's a little bit disappointing about this launch is the fact that this is not going to be a native macOS port. It's actually going to be a wine wrapper. So you see here within the file itself, it makes reference to Wine64, fairly old lib molten VKDY lib. And curiously, it also includes the D3D Metal framework. And it doesn't actually make use of D3D Metal because this is a DirectX 9 game, not a DirectX 11 or 12 game. So it's a bit weird why they would actually include D3D Metal from Apple's game porting toolkit, especially because the game porting toolkit license explicitly forbids D3D Metal being bundled into commercial games. So it's a bit weird that this has happened. I managed to test out the Mac port myself and I don't see this being particularly better than running the game through crossover, especially because this particular Mac port uses older versions of Wine. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you've managed to test out the Mac port of Star Wars The Old Republic yourself. What do you think about the Mac port and the performance of this game on your Apple Silicon Mac? Next, it looks like Apple are working on a new App Store-like app dedicated to games. So according to this article, the app is not expected to replace Game Center, but will in fact integrate with the user's Game Center profile. It's going to be a Play Now tab, and within this tab, users will find editorial content and game suggestions, challenges, leaderboards, achievements, and games from both the App Store and Apple Arcade will be featured in this new store. So currently, it's unknown whether this new app is going to be integrated into iOS 18 or iOS 19, and there's no news at all whether this is going to be ported to the macOS side, but I really expect this to happen eventually. Anyway, Apple desperately needed a dedicated gaming app, especially because there are so many games on the platform, it's really hard to find games and also to keep track of what games you're playing and what your friends are playing. So this is really cool to see there's a renewed interest in Apple trying to integrate and curate games on the platforms. I really hope that this does come to the macOS side in the future. Next up, we'll be talking about a few Windows games which now run great on Apple Silicon Mac. Last time we covered the fact that we can now run Silent Hill 2 on a Mac, but we can also now play the game Alan Wake 2 on the Mac, all thanks to a patch developed by the user Vladimir Prog, who also created the F16C patch for Ghost of Tsushima, which works fantastically on Apple Silicon Macs. Now I managed to test out this patch on my last live stream, and as far as I can tell, it works great. To fix any of the graphical artifacts, you just need to toggle photo mode on and then off, and then it seems to work fine. And Vladimir Prog is going to be releasing this patch to the public once their YouTube channel reaches 1,000 subscribers. So make sure to click on the link in the description for their YouTube channel called Mac Gaming Patches, and make sure to subscribe as well, because once it reaches 1,000, then everyone's going to get access to the Alan Wake 2 patch. And lastly, we have the fact that the M4 Macs are about to be announced. So by the time you watch this video, they've probably been announced already. But the fact is that we're very likely to have refreshes for the MacBook Pro lineup, including the base M4, the M4 Pro, and the M4 Max. And we're probably going to get a redesigned Mac Mini as well. So I'm really excited to see what kind of games are going to be tested in the future, whether they are native Mac ports or Windows games running on the Mac, or even emulation as well. So make sure to leave a comment to let me know what games you want to see tested on these devices. Anyway, thanks for sticking around till the end of this video. If you like this news series, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.